Welcome back to the Jeff Sanchez Show. We're live at South Station here in the heart of Boston. It's a great, great uh, terminal, a great uh, train station, and the man to my left uh, here today is uh, mainly responsible for that. Uh, the Democratic nominee for president in 1988, uh, the uh, the great governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, who single-handedly uh, it keeps uh, rail, keeps uh, this station alive, and keeps, in my view, the uh, opportunity uh, to keep high-speed rail around the country alive. It's great to have uh, Governor Michael Dukakis with us. Governor, thank you for being with us. Glad to be here, and it's always a pleasure to come to this station, which uh, looks a lot better than it did when I first inherited it. Well, you know, it is it is amazing the the what is what it was in the 1980s, and where we are today. Thank well, you. Um, water was coming through the roof. Uh, birds were flying around in the uh, rafters. <laughs> um, you didn't come here very often. But, you know, that was part of uh, a kind of neglect of the public realm that was happening all over the country. In this and many other cities, Jeff, I, don't, I still don't understand it. It was this magnificent structure, but um, we weren't paying attention to it. Um, we didn't understand the importance of it, not just as a station, but as a center of activity. It sparked a huge revival in the South Station area in terms of jobs and uh, preservation of existing buildings and new ones and so on. I mean, this is now a big business center. But um, look at it today. I mean, it's just magnificent. And, of course, thousands and thousands of people are using it for transportation. And I hope that's going to continue. But uh, it's a big issue in this campaign. Uh, Scott Brown has done everything he can to kill federal funding for high-speed rail. Well, you're going to get to my point because... You know, you, you, you have built this up, and now whether it's Scott Brown or whether it's Mitt Romney or whether it's it's the Republicans in general, they don't want high-speed rail. I mean, it used to be a, 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 a bipartisan thing. You work with Tommy Thompson when you were co-chairs of Amtrak. Now they give you a middle finger if you talk about any government dollars into high-speed rail. Well, look, Romney isn't just against high-speed rail. Romney wants to get rid of Amtrak. Right. He wants to totally defund Amtrak, which, uh, you know, is insanity. 30 million people rode Amtrak last year. I mean, is the guy conscious? Does he understand what's going on here? But I think I think it's a reflection of the fact that Romney really doesn't get it. I mean, he just doesn't understand how 90% of the American people live. Um, I remember when he was governor and somebody, somebody mentioned Ashmont Station and why it was still under construction for about the fifth or sixth year, and he didn't know where Ashmont was. <laughs> you know, it's just 15 to 20 minutes on the red line from yeah. the State House. Uh, so um, that's who we're dealing with, and uh, Brown is just as bad. I mean, I don't know how, Jeff, you can look at uh, the United States of America today still with an economy that's struggling, a great opportunity to put thousands of unemployed construction workers to work at a time when the contractors are hungry and bidding low and the cost of money is virtually zero. What a time to build a first-class national rail passenger system across the country, just, by the way, as our friends in Europe and Asia are doing every day. And instead, we've got uh, people like Romney and Brown and uh, the majority now in the House of Representatives, which always had a bipartisan majority for rail, doing everything they can to kill Amtrak, to kill rail funding, and to, um, I don't know what, I don't know what they think is going to happen in this country uh, if we don't have a first-class national passenger system. You know, one of the things that I think is so important is to what you have done as a public servant for many years. You could have done a lot of other things, but you decided to, to stay and fight uh, as a public servant, as governor, running for president, state legislator before that. What Scott Brown and Mitt Romney talk about is, is they basically talk government down. Not needed, not necessary. And this is sort of, to me, what, what I think we really, really need is somebody like Elizabeth Warren who wants to reform and wants to make government once again good in America. And I think that there is, there is a, a huge difference between where Scott Brown and his philosophy is on, on, you know, on, on trashing government and, and basically less regulation, less taxes, the mantra of the Republicans for years, and Elizabeth Warren, who I know you're going to be with here today, who understands and the need of high-speed rail. Who's taking the train. Right. Taking the train to Springfield for her, right. no, her right. nomination element. 
this to me is is a a a a good example of the distinction between Democrats and Republicans. Your thoughts? Well, it's even more puzzling than that. I mean, look. Apparently, these guys do want to put money into highways and airports. Right. Well, it's government that builds highways, and it's government that builds and runs airports. So what's their problem with transit and rail? I don't get it. Tommy Thompson, a conservative Republican from Wisconsin, who, by the way, is running for the United States Senate now as a Republican, mm -hmm. and I chaired and co-chaired the Amtrak board, both appointed by Bill Clinton with a... Bipartisan board, three Republicans, three Democrats. By the way, one of the best boards I've ever served on. There was no difference of opinion between us on this. We both understood that the country needs a first-class high-speed rail system, and its metropolitan areas need excellent public transportation. Now, all of a sudden, we've got this new breed, I don't know who they are, coming into the Congress that don't agree with that, and people like Brown and Romney, of all people, essentially following them. I don't get it, and I think it's a terrible way to try to build the economic future of this country. This is the time when we ought to be doing this, Jeff. It's a uh, time when we can do it at the lowest possible cost, and uh, I'm absolutely baffled at what these folks are talking about and what they're proposing. We're talking with uh, Governor Michael Dukakis here at South Station. The number to join is 866-338-9663. Uh, we have a special guest here, our good friend, the uh, Mr. Ohio when it comes to politics, the uh, former campaign strategist uh, for Jesse Jackson, campaign manager, uh, Jerry Austin joins us. Of course, in 1988, uh, Jerry Austin was uh, working for Jesse Jackson against uh, uh, Michael Dukakis. But I want to ask both of you gentlemen, as, as we look at this, because to me, the strategy, the message of, uh, of the White House and against Romney has to be one that is, is as tough as can be and also one that points out the, dis the distinctions between the two parties and the two. Jerry, as, as you look at, at where it is today, what, ad what advice would you have, what thoughts do you have in terms of what the message should be for the president vis-a-vis vis -vis Romney, particularly in Romney State where he finished 47th out of 50th in, um, in job creation? Well, first of all, he is the president and therefore he has to run on his record as opposed to being uh, a challenger in an open seat last time. And he has a record to run on and he should run on it. He also should not let Romney get away with anything in terms of these attacks and he's not. He's coming back and, 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 and he's attacking and obviously they have a game plan. Uh, but to me, uh, the key to this election is obviously the economy. I mean, as the economy gets better, people will stay with the incumbent. If the economy goes in the tank, uh, he's got some problems. But remember that uh, Obama uh, his young people last time. And in order to do that this time, he's got to concentrate on those 15, 16, and 17-year-olds in 2008 who are now eligible to vote. Uh, he's still closer in, in, in their age. Uh, he also is about the future, uh, and that's where I concentrate uh, my resources and my time. Uh, Jerry and, and Governor Dukakis both are professors, one in, in Ohio, one in Massachusetts, of course, in California in the winter, uh, Governor. Do you think that the president can 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 once again motivate those 18 year olds and older to, to get out there and vote because their future's at stake? I mean, you dry up uh, the idea of investing in this country. Do you dry out these kids? These kids are, are going to end up, you know, end up in a, in, a, in a third world nation status if we don't start investing in America. Well, I agree with Jerry. I mean, uh, I think they're very important. I'd go, I'd go beyond just connecting with them as voters. I want to get these kids deeply and actively involved in this campaign. And one way to do that is to do what uh, the Obama campaign did yesterday when David Axelrod came to the State House. Look, Romney was a disaster <laughs> as governor when it came to this state's economy. He was a disaster when it came to the state's infrastructure. I mean, it is not an exaggeration to say that when Romney left office, this state's infrastructure was a wreck. You cannot drive. I mean, on Storo Drive rusting, or anywhere else. Rusting bridges, pothole roads, couldn't get anything done, took forever to do things, uh, incompetent people responsible for his transportation policy, um, didn't really care. And uh, how do you build a strong and vibrant economy? Well, a first-class public infrastructure, excellent roads, highways, transit, rail, um, those kinds of things. Um, and we know that better than anybody. I mean, there's a reason that Romney is 25 points behind Obama 
in Massachusetts. And it's not because we're a blue state, because we voted for Reagan twice. There were four Republican governors after I left office, as you recall. Deval Patrick's the first Democrat to serve in uh, 20 years. Right. And uh, it's because we saw him in action when he was around. And uh, Deval Patrick has run rings around Romney when it comes to action. We've gone from 47th in the country in job creation under Romney to 5th in the country under Patrick. That tells you something, doesn't it? It sure does. So I think that message is very important here because he, you know, when Romney ran in, in 2002, we heard the same ragtime. He was a businessman. He understood the economy. He was going to turn things around. And um, on the fiscal side, he didn't do badly because he raised taxes and fees by $750 million. No, I don't fault him for that. He inherited a mess from his predecessors. Republican why, governors. Yes, <laughs> but why does he... And, and look, we're in another recession, and when that happens, states get into trouble. We know that. I went through three of them. But uh, why does he continue to deny the fact that uh, he raised taxes and fees big time? And frankly, he had to one of the circumstances. Instead, we get this dancing around. He really didn't do it. Of course he did it. But it was on the economic side of things that he was disaster. I mean, he just doesn't... I mean, I agree with the president. Uh, I don't have any problem with private equity firms, although I don't think they contribute a hell of a lot to the they overall don't. economy. But look, if people want to raise, make their money with private equity firms, good luck to them. But, um, but being, being over at Bain and Company does not qualify you to be uh, the economic leader of a state or a country. And we saw that uh, clearly when Romney was governor. We had, uh, and when I get Jerry's thoughts on this earlier, we had a gentleman that came over, Mr. McGee, who worked on Romney's uh, uh, disability board. And, 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 and month after month, year after year, the couple of years that this gentleman served, now in a wheelchair, uh, he saw cutbacks with Romney, cutbacks on, on health care, cutbacks on disability, cutbacks on everything going on. You couple that with the fact that when Bain went in, a lot of companies had to lay people off, a lot of people were fired. And this, to me, is a sort of a callousness. And I think that the fact that he has a tin ear, I'm not saying he's an evil guy. He may be a great family guy, for all I know. But the fact is, is when he's been leader, people have suffered. And he really hasn't gone out there and trying to look for a remedy for these folks. And that, to me, Jerry, is an example of how you can make the distinction. Here is Barack Obama, who was a community organizer. He could have went to Wall Street and made money. He decided to go and help people. And I think the distinction there between these two individuals is vast. Well, the, the key, keep in mind, I want to bring back a, uh, an old expression uh, that we haven't used in a long time. It's the Peter Principle. Now, Romney is, is, a, is a poster child for the Peter Principle. He doesn't run for re-election as governor because he can't win, so he runs for the Senate. <laughs> he loses the Senate, and now he's running for president. I mean, I guess if he could run for Pope, he'd do that next. But, but of course, he's a Mormon. But, but the, 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 the point is that the, the Republicans are, are so devoid of leadership uh, when you need it the most in these hard economic times that, that they bring up a guy like Romney who, you know, is, doesn't have a plan, except he's against everything Obama's for. Uh, he forgets who he was when he was governor of Massachusetts and who he is right now. And he's basically playing to the right wing of, of the party during the primary season. Now he's trying to go to the center. And, you know, this is a different world now. We have the technology, at the instant, uh, you know, news every, every single minute uh, of the day. And he's going to be exposed. Now, having said that, it's still going to be a close election sure. because this is a very divided country. And my state of Ohio is a, is a prime example where, uh, you know, it's going to be a three-point race either way. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's too early to tell uh, who's going to win this race. But, uh, you know, if I was a betting man, and I'm not, uh, I would favor the incumbent because I think people are going to stick with what they know and, and, and give him credit for what he's done as opposed to turn to this guy who has no record uh, to run on, especially for president. Sherry, I disagree with you in only run respect to say he doesn't have a plan. He's got a plan all right. It's the Bush economic plan all right, over again exactly. that killed us the first time. But my point is, he, he doesn't have his plan. You're right. Fair enough. But, I mean, who was it? Clinton said the other day that it's uh, Bush economics on steroids. I of mean, course it is. You know, we tried this once under Herbert Hoover. It didn't work. <laughs> yeah. And one of the things I tell my kids at Northeastern these days, Jeff, your alma mater, is That's that right. you study history to try to learn from it. You know, the Greeks have an expression, pathima, mathima, even rhymes. Things happen, you're supposed to learn from them. I mean, this is, 
This is Hoover all over again. Speaker Bain of the other day, you recall, Jerry, Speaker Bain of the other day says he's now going to hold up the process again to go through another one of these agonizing debt limit things so that he can impose European Union economics on the United States, essentially. Right? Look at Europe. Folks over there are saying we should be doing what Obama's doing exactly. in the United States. I mean, Invest. And um, Help people. it's, don't, it's don't. incredible. I mean, Boehner wants to impose an EU-type solution on the American right. economy. How many times do we have to go through this? Balance and uh, the Romney the plan, making 50, fr a year. frankly, the Romney plan is, is Herbert Hoover economics all over again, Jerry. It's just a repetition of the same thing. And uh, it isn't working in Europe. In fact, it's a disaster in Europe, and it would be a disaster in the United States, as we saw under Bush. I mean, how did we get into this mess in the first place? Yeah, that's why it's called Grand Old Party. <laughs> and, of course, it's my fault, because if I'd beaten Bush 1, you'd have never heard of Bush 2, and we wouldn't be in this mess. So I owe everybody an apology. Governor, today you'll be, you'll be with uh, Elizabeth Warren at 1115 here at South Station. Uh, we wish uh, you and her a, uh, a good day, and uh, thank you so much for coming on. Jerry Austin, great to see you, too.